Hey everybody, happy Friday. Sorry I'm a few minutes late today. I have um, some new equipment that I'm working out. We'll see how it goes today. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, let's see if I can see where you guys are. If I can see you, if you can hear me. All right, I see you guys jumping on. Let me know if you can hear me. Hi, Vicki. I am hoping to improve um, some video quality a little bit. Been messing around with lights and sound. My room is very echoey. I got rid of my rug and that kind of made things even more echoey. So I don't really want a rug in here. I like to be able to sweep. So I'm trying to see what I can do to improve sound. Um, hi guys, thanks for joining me. All right, somebody tell me, can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, Jen, hi Jen. Yeah, it's super wet outside, so disgusting, I know. We've had so much rain. Hi, okay, good, Vicki can hear me. Okay, good, so I'm assuming we're good to go. All right, I'm just gonna jump right in today because I want to make sure I get everything done in the time frame that I have. My daughter has to be picked up right at around three, so I have to hurry it up. Um, if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday before, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, I always do three projects on Fridays, and uh, beforehand I always, uh-oh, this is under the camera. Let's see if I can get it out. There we go. I always type up a PDF. That should be on my blog right now. The post should go um, live at 2 o'clock, which is right now. So the PDF has all the projects, the three projects that we're doing. It has all the products that you'll need that I'm using, as well as measurements down here if there are any that um, are needed to for you to know. Also, all my announcements are over here on the second page. And I'm gonna quickly run through those because some of them are time sensitive. I have a Stamp and Blends Club that will start November 1st. If you are interested in that, you have to sign up um, by October 31st. That link is right there. You can type it in. There's, I think the link is also on my blog. If not, message me or email me and I will send that to you. Yes, do you like my earrings? Thank you very much, Deidre. I got them at a craft sale. They're handmade by somebody locally here and I had to have them, of course. Um, so Stamp and Blends Club will be five months. You order whatever you want each month. As long as you use that host code for the Stamp and Blends Club, I'm going to send you two projects and a PDF tutorial. Um, plus, um, the host code collects stamp and rewards and I take those stamp and rewards and by everybody who participates, an embellishment and you, that comes in your, um, package each month too. So it's five months. It's a great way to collect your blends if you don't have them already, buying a, a few each month. Um, but if you already have blends, it's also a great way to learn how to use them. Each month it'll be something different, a different video tutorial and two projects. So if you're interested in signing up for that, make sure you do so by the end of the month. And I do have a limit on that, um, just so that you know, if it gets too terribly big, I will have to close it so that I can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to um, bite off more than I can chew. The second thing on the PDF is the holiday retreat, and that is filling up really, really fast. I suspect that we will hit limits on both the to-go option and the local option um, pretty quickly. Uh, both the links are there. The local um, retreat is November 17th in San Antonio, Texas, and the to-go option is available to anyone within the United States. Um, you can read more about that on my blog. The third thing on the list I really wanted to point out, it's something I'm super excited about. It's my holiday treats class, and it's called Nothing Sweeter. You can get it as part of, just ignore that, this is from a craft sale. <laughs> um, you can get this class as an add-on to the retreat, or you can um, also order it by yourself. If you're not in interested in getting the retreat to go, you can get this class to go um, in November. Usually I don't announce my classes so far in advance. This is a November class, but because it's part of that holiday catalog, I wanted to, I mean, holiday retreat, I just wanted to go ahead and get it out there. Six projects using the Nothing Sweeter bundle. This is a super, super cute bundle. And um, 
they all kind of coordinate um, these colors, the crumb cake, and they use these adorable framelits and stamps. So if you're interested in that, look for that on the PDF as well. And then the last thing on there is my stamp -a stack I actually have two stamp -a stacks One is for next month, so I don't even want to talk about it yet. If you want a stamp -a stack this month, it's the Making Spirits Bright stamp -a stack It's at the bottom of the PDF. And... Um, that registration is next week, October 24th. So I wanted to just make sure you guys are aware of that. It's kind of, I could not get that video to upload for like two weeks. Usually I have them right away. And so you may not have seen it. Um, I finally did get that, that video to upload. But um, so anyways, check that out. The links are there. Everything's on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. And if you can't find it, just message me. All right, how about prizes? Now, Facebook Friday always has two ways to win prizes. Sharing the video is one. And the second um, way to enter for a prize is to go over to my blog, scroll to the bottom. There's a little widget there. You enter your information and it randomly draws somebody. So last week on my blog, I was giving away tags and tidings bundle. And this is really cute. I think this may be a Facebook Friday here in the future. Isn't that just so cute? And it has the matching framelits. Um, and the winner for that is Christine Shannon. Christine, I think I have your information. So I will get this out to you next week. Christine, congratulations. And then the second winner is for sharing the video. Um, we had lots of shares last week, so I'm assuming you guys loved the prize. Um, I kind of love it too. It's the Farmhouse Christmas bundle which is the star of my holiday retreat coming up and the winner of this is Shannon Needfelt. Shannon I don't have your information so if you will message me or email me your mailing address I will get you the bundle. Congratulations and thanks for sharing the video. Now this week I've got two prizes and they're identical. Oh Christine's there. Good. You're very welcome Christine. Thank you. Um, Two identical bundles okay and it's a bunch of stuff. It's three things, each prize. Um, first, it's the Peaceful Noel stamp set with the coordinating, this really cool, interesting ribbon. I don't know the name of it. Where's the name? Mary Merlot in copper. It's very interesting ribbon, along with a really fun wire snowflakes, okay? So that's one prize. And then I've got a second set. So one is for sharing. I'll pick one person who shared the video. And the other one is for over on my blog on the raffle copter. I'll pick one person over there. Okay, so make sure you do both. That way you have um, two chances to win. All right, the, let's see. I wanted, I think I mentioned the Snowflake Showcase is coming. This is a really fun selection of products that are gonna be exclusive to us in November. Um, demonstrators can order them this month or you can buy them in a starter kit if you're interested in getting the starter kit. Um, but for everybody else, they'll be available November 1st through November 30th while supplies last. There's some really interesting things in here, some embellishments, some velvet cardstock, two stamp sets, and a framelit set. And let me tell you, they're gorgeous. These will be, I'm gonna do Facebook Friday on these on November 6th. Second, okay so they come out November 1st be watching for me on November 2nd and I will share that hostess code early in case you want to use the host code that week if you plan on, on ordering these on the first that way you can get the make and takes for free um, so that'll be coming next week I'm not totally sure what I'm doing yet oh I think I know what I'm doing I, I'm working on it I think I hit it so you couldn't see it um, but that'll be November 2nd um, this week if you like the make and takes and you want them for free, where did my little kits go? Here they are. Everybody who places a minimum $30 order between now and Monday at midnight using the host code will get today's make and takes in the mail next week for free. I'll mail them out on Tuesday, Wednesday. I cut on Tuesday, mail on Wednesday. And this is kind of what it looks like. It comes ready for you with a link to the video so that you can put the projects together, hopefully, with what you've ordered will help you um, to make them. I always feature a stamp set or a bundle. So um, if you have that stamp set or bundle or you wanna order it, here's a great way to get three free make and takes um, to go with it. So that host code is on today's PDF. 
um, right here at the top. It's also going to be down here when I flip the camera around. Um, and then it's also over on my blog. So those orders need to be in by Monday at midnight because Tuesday morning, that's the first thing I do, is I cut for the free make and takes. Okay, I think I ran through all the um, announcements except for this one, I forgot, the tutorial bundle. Don't forget, if your, fit, your order is $50 or more, you get this giant tutorial bundle with 12 tutorials in it, okay? So there's that, that is it. Now I'm gonna move the camera down and there's a microphone attached. So hopefully it doesn't get all weird and make weird noises, okay? So you guys, this is like a trial. You are my guinea pigs and I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I'm going to cover you up for just a second. Um, if I hang up on you, please come back and find me because let me turn you around so you don't see up my nose um, because I will start a new one. I've only done that one time and it freaked me out. Um, but but we, we got it worked out, I think, if I remember correctly. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I know it's probably making some weird noises. Um, you know, the the audio has been bothering me for a while, the audio on my videos. And so I've been looking for a microphone. I got one, didn't like it. Got another one, didn't like it. So I've ordered this one. It had really high ratings. But look, you guys, can you see what's hanging down are the wires? Okay, let's see if we can fix that, hopefully. Can you see the wires? I don't know. Um, and then I have this new light here. We'll see. I have a lot of lights in here, which I think because I lowered the phone holder, it's creating like a shadow because I felt like previously my phone was too far and you guys couldn't really see. So we're guinea pigs today. Thank you guys for being patient. Joy says she loves the new snowflake framelits and joy you're right i have seen a lot of people say that um online i do this every week i take this down and then i have to move it um and i was like okay there's snowflakes you're right but then i played with them this week oh my gosh they're so neat they are really really neat why does it look so dark hmm um but anyway those will be coming yeah november 1st i don't know i'm about to give up on this all right we're gonna have to move on we're gonna have to move on. We're gonna leave it right there. We're gonna press that down. We're gonna put the, the, uh... <laughs> ah, it's crazy around here. Um, here's the host code. So if you decide you want those make and takes, there it is. And anyway, all right, so this week we are all about the feathers and frost. Here are today's three projects. We're doing one 3D and two cards. One's a simple card and one's a fancy card. And then hopefully you saw on Tuesday, we we did this, this card three ways, fall, winter, and spring, um, which just goes to show that even though a stamp set is designated for Christmas, it doesn't mean it has to be for Christmas. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna move these two out of the way. We're gonna do those in a little while. And we're gonna do this card. This was a card for my card class this month. And I try to keep my card class cards pretty simple um, because we're making so many. So I really try to keep it simple. And I really like it even though it's simple. And I'm gonna show you a way to create um, this card. Like if you wanted to do this for your Christmas cards and you needed to make like say 50 of them, I'm gonna show you how to simplify that process, okay? All right, so of course, not only are we using the feathers and frost, but we're using, and I don't know where I put the stamp case, but here it is, it's the wood slice background stamp. So of course, you know, when I use a background stamp, we gotta use the Stamparatus. The Stamparatus is your friend when you are stamping on a background stamp, all right? Because it's gonna allow you to stamp numerous times if you need to. I find that with my background stamps, um, when I try to just do them with my hand, you know, like, you know, traditional stamping, I can never get a good solid image. But with the Stamparatus, we can stamp as many times as we need to. Um, and get that solid image. Now, 
you know, I've told you guys before, I put the washi tape here um, previously to stamp card fronts at my card class. So I've left it there because it kind of just keeps me, um, gives me a place to put my card or my card front every time. So I'm using a full card base this time. It's four and a fourth by 11 crumb cake. And I'm gonna set it down in here and then use my magnet there on the edge. Then I'm gonna get my crumb cake ink. Cecilia, yeah, you know, I really like to look at my stamps and say, okay, how else can I use this? I get the traditional design for the stamp, but what other way can I use this? So that's kind of how I um, came up with that idea for those those cards, using them for the different three, uh, three different seasons. All right, crumb cake, and we're gonna close it. And again, I think I told you guys last week, stand up when you're using your Stamparatus and really press down all over and then open it up and look see right there i missed it so i can just close it again no need to re-ink i just didn't push push hard enough perfect all right so we're going to take the magnet off move this to the side and we're going to take this plate off here and set it <coughs> uh oh every time they love to say hello. I'm gonna get my other, and actually I'm gonna turn it because I like, I don't know why that's up there. That was turned like that. I want this on the side here and that at the top. It's just bothering me for some reason. All right, so now we're gonna do this part right here. And traditionally, I would say stamp and then cut, right? Um, it's easier to line up a stamp or line up a framelit around the stamped image. Um, however, when you're mass producing something and you're gonna do a whole bunch of them, the Stamparatus will let you do the opposite. Cut a whole bunch real fast and then stamp them easily, making sure you get them in the right place. We're gonna use this stamp in here, the wreath, and as you can see, this is photopolymer. And photopolymer is different from red rubber. Let me pull that one back over here. And now the red rubber has this foam in here. Can you guys see that layer of foam? And that layer of foam is deeper than the photopolymer, right? So the photopolymer is much more narrow. So we've got to add a base down here at the bottom and that's what this foam sheet that comes with it is for. All right, now I've cut out all of my little scalloped oval, I mean, <laughs> old olive scallop squares. And I'm gonna take the negative space here from the cardstock and I'm gonna put it in here in my Stamparatus like this. And I can actually put it anywhere. And I like to put it right in the center and I'm gonna take my magnet and hold it down. And then I'm gonna take my stamp and I'm gonna lay it in there and get it perfect. All right, just exactly where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna close and open and set my die cut in there. Now, if you had to make, let's say 100 Christmas cards, this would be faster than stamping and then cutting each individual one. It would take forever. So this way you can just stamp, take it out, put it in and stamp. It is faster that way. All right, old olive ink and the little template there has created a space for us to put it every time so that it's in the right place. All right, so that's another way to use your Stamparatus. Now we're gonna use this, I don't wanna hit the camera. We're gonna use this um, stamp in a minute. So I'm gonna take that off, set that aside. Now another idea that I had while I was coloring this is that if I was making a 100 of these, I would not want to sit and color all of these, it would take you forever. So what I decided is to get my light old olive and just go and color in a few of them. That's gonna create enough variation in these leaves to make it look different. All right, you don't have to color all of them in, you don't have to shade, and because it's tone on tone, it's gonna be kind of light. And I'm just gonna do about half of them, maybe. Just so that it looks kind of like, all right, we've got two different colored leaves. One is the one that's not colored in, and one is the one that is colored in with a light old olive. Now I'm gonna take my dark cherry cobbler and color these in. Kathy, did you say you overlooked this? 
I know, I'm telling you, there are some sleepers in this catalog. We tend to really notice the ones that are like full page spreads that Stampin' Up! really highlights. Um, but these sleeper sets, we kind of don't see them. So this is a good one, definitely. All right, I'm going to move that out of the way. I have pre-cut my little banner here. This is from the Lakeside Framelits. If you don't have those, you could always just make it a rectangle or a banner, you know, where you cut a V on each end. And I am stamping the Season's Greetings. That is from this set in Cherry Cobbler. And we're going to layer it. Now I do have clean recordings of these videos. I am in the process today, right now, uploading them to YouTube. So if you wanna come back and watch them, um, you can later and you don't have to, you know, skip through all the camera wiggling and me talking about other things. And that'll be over on my YouTube channel. All right, this is the festive farmhouse paper. Um, you can see the Christmas words on the back. It's the little plank, wood plank piece that I keep using this, this uh, pattern out of the stack over and over. I love it so much. It's one and a half by four and a fourth. I'm gonna put it there in the middle and then I'm gonna take a few dimensionals. Oh, thanks Elena, I appreciate that. And put it right there. Now that is cute, right? but we need a little sparkle. And I think I have my take your pick tool. It's a great way to get your little rhinestones is with that little scalloped in. And I'm not going to put a rhinestone on every berry because that if we're making a hundred of these for our Christmas cards, that would be a lot of rhinestones. And again, that would take you forever. So I'm only gonna put like five. That's enough to give it a little bling, give it a little something something and not require you six months of work. And there we go, you guys. What do you think? So cute and so easy. I love it. I love this card. And I love that wood slice background. All right, so there you go. Card number one. And I'm gonna switch out my tray for the next project. So if you guys would just hang with me for a second. I have to reuse some of these products, so I wanna make sure that I don't take them over and have to go back. All right, let's see which one, which one. I think we'll do the second card. Since we just did the easy, simple card, let's do the super fancy card. And we're gonna use the embossing mat on the next card. I noticed you guys asked for, when I asked for suggestions over on my raffle copter, lots of you said you wanted to see that embossing mat being used. I have, that was probably my most requested um, thing. And I'm going to be honest, mine was still in the package. Yeah, I know. I hadn't used it. I pre-ordered it back in, I think, April. And I hadn't even used it. But you guys gave me the push to do that. I need the block for that. Who was it who just said I was organized? Um, Judy. Yeah, Judy, you're going to jinx me. I try to be organized, but I still do forget stuff. Okay, so let me show you the card. Here it is. Very different. Look, it's very fancy and gold, and it opens like this. See that? And there is the piece that is embossed with a framelit. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that in just a little while. You know what? In fact, I think we'll start with that because we need to emboss and then I don't wanna to have to emboss two times. So let's start with that part. All right, now this card, I'll tell you in just a little while about the folding on this card, but we're gonna start with that thing that you guys have been wanting to know about, the embossing mat. And it really is kind of fun. And it really kind of opens you know, the possibilities to use whatever you have as an embossing folder rather, or as, I guess it wouldn't be a folder, an embossing plate rather than um, just a, a die. All right, so here's the inside piece. It's very vanilla and it is four by five and a fourth. And this framelit, I don't know, let me see. This one is two and a half. This is the scalloped two and a half inches scallop square. So you're gonna put it down and then you need to put it 
with some washi to make it stay in place because we're gonna flip it over. Okay, like that. This is the regular platform. I took out my magnetic platform. I'm gonna put a clear plate down. Here's my piece. Remember we taped it down and we're gonna flip it. We want the thin mat. It comes with a thick and a thin. We're gonna use the thin mat on top of that. And then this white, this is, um, it replaces your other clear plate, okay? And it kind of feels like nothing's happening. When I go through, it kind of feels like nothing's happening. Let's see if something happened. Okay, peel that off. I see something happened. Something exciting is happening, as my friend Ange and I say. And look, it's just embossed. And it's just kind of a subtle little square. So fun. I am glad you guys pushed me to open that because now I got to use it a lot. All right. So there's that. Let's go ahead and do some of our other kind of embossing, our heat embossing. When you heat emboss, you need to start out with the embossing buddy. And the embossing buddy is just a bag of baby powder, basically. I mean, I don't know if it's really baby powder, but that's what it seems like. Rub it all over your paper. That's going to remove any static that you have that would hold our embossing powder where we don't want it, okay? And then we're gonna use Versamark. And yes, I know, my Versamark pad is supposed to be white, but this just shows you how much it's been used and abused. It still is fine, so don't worry. Every time I open it for a video, I think I really should order another one just so that I don't look crazy. I don't know what exactly happened. I think it was in a class. Something happened, but it's okay, it still works. So emboss, uh, Versamark ink is clear or dirty gray. <laughs> no, not really. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I don't need to do that again. Oh, um, it's clear. It stamps clear. Now we're going to take this little sprig here and stamp in the corners. The pad is stained. It's fine. All right. So I don't know if you guys can really see that. Now here's my gold embossing powder. And I have it in an old stamp case so that I can just scoop it and then sprinkle it down into the case like that. I also um, have bought little Tupperware containers, you know, not Tupperware, but the cheapy ones to do this too. It's a great um, way to store and then use your embossing powder. All right, here and here, tap it all off. Make sure we don't have it anywhere we don't want it. Put that back. Close the lid. All right, when you heat emboss, you have to have a heat tool. Your hair dryer will not work. Don't ask me how I know that. And it takes about, I don't know, I say 30 seconds, but it's probably less than that um, to get it to start working. The tool, the heat tool actually has to, to warm up. You know, I feel like maybe, what is up with the light? It's so dark. I added a lamp and it looks like it's darker. Sorry, I hit the camera. Okay, let's see what happens. <gasps> there we go. Can you guys see it? I have two giant um, lights above the table that have eight giant light bulbs in them that I can't even look at, they're so bright. And you would think that would be plenty. It's real dark and gloomy outside, and I have a window right in front of me too, so maybe that's the difference today. All right, here we go. We've got it all, all shiny, and when it's done, let's just make sure we hit all of it. You'll be able to tell because it'll be dull if you didn't. There we go. All right, did the camera stop shaking? Good. All right, yes, Betty, yes, you can use a framelit, but you have to use that special embossing mat. All right, of course, we're gonna bring in the Vegas Gold, which I feel like Vegas Gold, I don't know, it seems inappropriate for Christmas. <laughs> but it's just the name, it's just the name. All right, I'm gonna start with my Aqua Painter, and I'm gonna start with some full strength Vegas Gold. I'm gonna dip here in the lid, and I'm gonna paint in just some of those lids, uh, lids, leaves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
And I did not squeeze my water or anything. There is water in here. And we're gonna use the water here in a little bit. But I'm gonna do some of the leaves full strength, if that makes sense. All right, well, I kinda of did more on the left, but that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna come over here and do two of these. Get a little bit more, two of these. And then I'm gonna take this. I have a, I now have a block designated for my um, glimmer paint. You don't have to do that. You don't even have to use a block. You could use your silicone mat. You could also use, you know, like a paper plate but I'm just doing this. Now I'm gonna squeeze some water, I'm gonna swirl it around, and then I'm gonna dry my paint, I mean my aqua painter off really good because I don't want drippy drippy. I just wanted to dilute the gold a little bit so that we have some variation over here. All right, and I put two drops of water in there and I really just meant to do one. But that's the way it goes when you squeeze that aqua painter. You're not sure how many is going to come out, so you just got to be careful and go with it. Now, if you watched on Tuesday, we colored these leaves in different colors. Some of them were fall colors. I think the card that I actually demonstrated was all fall colors. Um, and then the spring and the winter card used different greens. Here we're doing gold. So lots of um, options. You could also use, oh, and I was gonna show you guys. You could also use your watercolor pencils here. Since this is such a small area, I think it's a good um, place to use your watercolor pencils. I actually played around with it last week and decided to stick with blends because I just love my blends. But I was gonna show you the difference on the next project between um, watercolor pencils and the blends. The blends are definitely, brighter and more vivid, but the watercolor pencils are subtle and that's kind of the, you know, the purpose of them is to be watercolor-ish, right? So you don't want them bright and vivid. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna move this. We're gonna cut this out, bring the big shot back over. Hopefully I don't knock you guys again. I feel like I've been changing, changing, changing everything lately with this, trying to get this set up right. All right, back to the magnetic platform. And I'm gonna use, this is the largest scalloped square. And notice I just left the berries that way. They're red. No need to, no need to color them in really because the cardstock is red. All right, hi everybody who's joined. Thank you, thank you for joining. Thank you for liking and sharing. I appreciate that. There we go, we've got that. Now, let's see, is there anything else we have to die cut? I don't think so. So I'm actually gonna put them on the floor and grab the other pieces that we need. All right, now I told you this was a fancy fold card and it's kind of a simple, I feel like it's kind of a cheater fancy fold. Um, five and a half, no, five and a half by eight and a half. So basically I've taken my card stock and cut it on the long side at five and a half. And I've scored it at two and an eighth and four and a fourth. So this would just be a regular card fold like that, but you're gonna fold this panel back like that so that it opens like that, just a little fancier. All right, so then, here it is, get your adhesive. And I realized, you guys, I'm using the exact same piece of DSP I used in the last one. Remember the wood planks? I think I'm gonna have to order some more for your Facebook Friday projects. <laughs> I don't know, that's a lot of that pattern, but oh well. This is the opposite side, two inches by five and three eighths, and you just stick that there. Oh, we need to stamp the joy. And we're gonna do that in Cherry Cobbler, right there. And then, because I am who I am and I can't leave well enough alone, I'm gonna take my gold. Uh-oh, I better move some stuff. <laughs> and I'm gonna do some, some gold on here, just flicking it a little bit, like that. See, I'm just going to the lid and flicking it. 
I've been doing that a lot. I can't stop. I love it. I love the flicking of the shimmer. All right, let me wipe that off so it doesn't dry. We, ooh, Diane, that's very creative. Wink of Stella on the berries, yes. So then they would be even shimmer, shimmery, shimmery-ish. They would be shimmery. Yes, that's a great idea. All right, dimensional. Here is gold foil that now has some gold flicks on it. Gold foil, bunch of banners, and bunch of banner framelits. I just cut that out. And I'm gonna put the joy right in the middle right there okay then we'll bring this back actually you know what i want to put this in here first so we can line it up now we need to add one more thing here the front says joy and the inside says and peace to your heart right in the middle cherry cobbler all right now let's see if i can do it without smearing it right here on the inside, like that. Get it straight. Oh, there we go. All right, then take this piece and we're gonna center it over that. And I can't remember, what did I, did I do dimensionals? Yep, of course I did. What a silly question. I always do dimensionals. So I'm gonna just put some dimensionals right here on this front panel. And center it like that and there you have it very pretty now i would not probably make a hundred of these i don't know you might want to but maybe these are for special family and friends so pretty all right so card number two what do you guys think i hope you're liking it because we've got one more i feel like today's going by really fast all right all right let's see what do i need to take and what do i leave all right, let me get my last tray. Now you guys, is really this is really funny to me that this project uses no big shot work. Can you believe it? I know, it's very unusual for me. No big shot work. We're gonna use all punches on this. And first I have to introduce you to the double Ghirardelli square. Um, excuse me. Yeah, that's what I said. It's double. Have you guys seen these before? I've never seen them. I saw them at Target and I had to control my squeal. I really thought they were exciting. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess because I use the Ghirardelli regular squares all the time. And so to see something different, I was excited. They were at Target and I can't even remember where they were, but I'm sure they were over in the candy section. I would think. So anyway, I think they're new, two squares. So I immediately came home and made a holder for it. And we're going to not put a sentiment on this so that you can just use it anytime you want. What you could do is you could fold this down like that and you could put the sentiment in here or you could put a sentiment banner across here. You could use, if everything in here is Christmas related, joy could be used during the regular year, I would think. Um, but if you wanted to use other things, um, this one we used on Tuesday, the gift of your friendship means so much. Now, of course that, of course, could be used all year. Um, but I feel like it was too big here. Um, so you could even put it on the candy bar if you wanted, when they pulled it out, they could see that. So just lots of options. I went ahead and just left it like that. Um, it would be a cute party favor too. I also wanted to make sure that I pointed out that this stamp set has a hand stamped by. Um, we don't do personalized stamps anymore. And so sometimes I get questions about where you could get a stamp to put on the back of your card. So there's one right there, hand stamped by, and you could sign your name because it's a little piece of artwork. Okay, let's make this first. Let's do, let's do the stamping first. And I am going to stamp the wreath on thick whisper white in old olive. And I like to use thick whisper white when I use my stamp and blends, I think I mentioned this on Tuesday because I find that sometimes on a regular whisper white, I have bleed out where it bleeds out when I put too much ink. I mean, it is my fault, but with the thick whisper white, I find it's more forgiving to those of us who have a heavy hand. All right, now let's look, I'm gonna actually punch this, just this center part out with a 
two inch circle punch. So I don't need to color all the leaves. All right, I'm just gonna color everything that would go around the bird. And in fact, let's stamp the bird. Um, I also wanna point out that there's a place here for the bird. There's a perch right here. Um, I didn't realize it at first, you know, just looks like a wreath. But then I realized, okay, there's a bare branch there for the little bird. And there's two birds in the set. This is the one looking to the left, and this one is the one looking to the right. Let's start with the leaves. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the first project with the light. Um, hello, light old olive. I start reading y'all's comments and then I just, it's like my brain stops. And then I am gonna actually go back with the dark old olive here in a minute because I don't wanna have white leaves. I don't wanna leave them just white. No need to shade or anything on these. We're gonna shade a little bit on the bird because the bird is the star of the show here, not the leaves, so we don't need to worry too much about making them all realistic and, you know, we just wanna color them in. Uh, I wonder if I need to color these in, we'll see. All right, so I've done everything around him. Now I'm gonna take my dark, rich razzleberry and color in the berries. Whoops. Like that. Now I stamped him in memento black because I'm gonna do him in several colors. I could have stamped him in rich razzleberry, but I honestly find for something like this, and I did try him like that, it just kind of all washed out and you couldn't see any detail. So that's why I did him in memento. And it has to be memento, you can't use stays on. Um, the memento is water-based and the markers are alcohol-based. So you've got to have the opposite kind of ink when you use these. Now I've taken light, rich razzleberry, colored him in, and now I'm gonna go under his wing and down around his belly where those hash marks are with the dark, as well as right here under um, that little round part of his wing. Blend it all back in with my light. Now, if you guys are just joining me, I wanted to remind you if you've missed the announcement at the top, that I have a blends club that is starting on November 1st. You'll get exclusive video tutorials and projects each month, as well as a free embellishment. This is Light Daffodil Delight, and I'm gonna go with Dark Daffodil Delight and just add a little bit there on his breast. So if you're interested in learning how to use your Stampin' Blends better, it's a it's a fun little program. I did it last year and had a lot of feedback that you guys wanted it back. So it's coming back for round two. We're gonna focus on the new colors that we have. All right, I think he's ready. Two inch circle punch. Yep, looks like we've colored everything correctly. Then we're going to get, let me make sure I punched the right one. This morning I punched the wrong one. Early Espresso with a Starburst Punch. And then this is the Everyday Label Punch. Yes, I see you guys saying about the stamps with your names on them. Yeah, you know, I have a feeling that was just a little bit of a nightmare for stamping up um, to have those custom made. I know um, we had some mistakes made on a couple that I had ordered. This is a Sprig Punch. And it was not their fault, it was my fault. And you know, we went back and forth and back and forth um, about who was responsible. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. They just wanna say hello. Um, about, well actually we didn't go back and forth. It was my responsibility, because I entered it wrong. I don't remember, but anyway, I think that was probably a little bit of a uh, too, you know, too much um, individualization for them. Like it probably was more of a, um, I don't know, I, I, that's just my assumption. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna cut this in half. 
I'll stop babbling about things I really don't know about <laughs> and put that there. Let's layer these up, but first we're going to put some twigs here. So put some adhesive there and down here. And I'm gonna take my four twigs and just kind of layer them. I think this punch is on back order, you guys, because it's so popular. But I'm, oh, I forgot to color his tail. Um, but it'll be back soon. I think you can actually order it. It's not on unorderable, but it is on back order. Thanks, Carrie. All right, color him in his tail. How could I forget? All right, now we need the dimensionals. Let's do two here on the starburst. And then the reason I cut this in half was because you can't see it very much. So if you cut it in half, then you can kind of elongate it. So I'm gonna kind of put a space there in between it. Let's get it straight, get the trash out of the way and just set it on there like that. Did I not take, <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, you gotta take the backing off. And there we go. Oh, you know what, I don't like it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The bird, he's kind of lopsided, let's try again. I want him, the bird, upright. I was looking at the foliage, the twigs. There we go. Okay, so there we've got him. Now, let's make the holder. The holder, the pouch, the pocket, whatever you wanna call it, is made with the envelope punch board. And it's pretty easy. This is a five and a half by five and a half inch early espresso square. And remember, that's over on my blog on this PDF right here, okay? Details are right there. You're gonna put it in your envelope punch board and line it up right here with one and seven eighths. Then you're gonna take your the little scoring tool that comes on the side and score right there and punch, okay? Score and punch. Then rotate it. Don't even need to look over here now, just line it up right here and score and punch. So each time you turn it, you're just lining that little, that little, what's it called? It has a name, score guide, up with a score line, all right? The, all you need the one and seven eighths for is that very first one. All right, there we go. Now, typically, you would put all four in here like this, and you're gonna round all the corners like that. But you'll see here in a second that we're gonna actually cover these up, and they don't even need to be rounded. But I thought I'd show you anyways if you were making something else. All right, let's get my chocolate and put it in here. And see how if I wrap this around, this is too long right here. So just snip it off because it won't even be seen. Now come over here and add some adhesive, almost called it embellishment, right there and wrap it around like that. All right, there we go. Now down here, same, a little bit of adhesive on the end. And there you go. Now, well, I didn't do a good job on that. Now we're gonna take a three inch by six inch piece of the Country Lane DSP. And we're, this is not a belly band. We're actually adhering it down, okay? And it's covering that up. So wrap it around like that. There we go. And then we're just gonna put our cute little stacked images Hi, Susan, that's okay. The video will always be available for replay. Oh, you know, I was gonna show you guys something too about saving your videos. When I'm done, I'll show you. All right, and there we go, but wait, we're not done. Hey, and listen, you guys, do you hear that? <laughs> I was like, what is in there when I was making my video? And I looked and it's the lid to my aqua painter. I don't know how to get it out. I don't know how it got in. But now I have to get it out somehow. Ugh. Anyways, I thought you guys would find that funny. All right, this is the Fresh Fig <laughs> Ruffled Ribbon. And I'm gonna just make a bow. Now, Fresh Fig is not Rich Razzleberry, which is what we used. But look, it goes perfectly. 
perfectly. Have you guys seen these double Ghirardellis? Have you seen them? I've never seen them. And that's it. Very cute. Look, I actually have three and I'm going to send them to school on Monday for the teachers. So cute. Look, that bird's looking that way. It doesn't matter. It's so cute. All right. Well, there you go, you guys. There's the third project. Let's look at all of them together. The This is called the Feathers and Frost stamp set. Here it is. We've used it in a ton of ways this week. Two Christmas cards. And we also did three other cards for different seasons. And we made a candy holder. So if you're interested in getting this, Put your order in by Monday at midnight and use this hostess code and I will send you all three of these make and takes for free in the mail. Okay, that's an awesome deal. Many of you have been taking um, advantage of it and I greatly appreciate it. Now wait, I'm gonna show you how to save your live videos. Okay, now I don't know. Let's see. There I am right here when you are and actually you can do it while you're just scrolling along let's see if i can get it to come up if you're scrolling along facebook and you don't have time to watch these little dots right here see the little dots you click on them and it says save video so you save it all right see how it went down so then you go over to your menu and scroll down where is it am i just looking at it I usually do it on my computer. There it is, saved. See, I have 11 videos saved. And you go over there and look, there's all the videos that you have saved to watch later. So that's just kind of a fun little tip for you. That will help you when you see live videos but you don't have time to watch them. Um, just save it for later, for the weekend when you're crafting or maybe when you're cleaning or whatever you're doing. That way you have some things to watch. Okay, you guys, I'm done. Wow, I got done early this week. Don't forget, go get your PDF. Don't forget to put in your order by Monday. And I will see you next week. I have something cooking in my brain that I'm trying to make come to life. That'll be really exciting if I can get it done for next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Um, so be looking for that. And of course, next Friday at two o'clock as well. All right, you guys have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week. Bye.